According to Graham Hancock, people are wrong about the history of Sphinx. Why? Because as Graham Hancock explains when people analyze the history of the Sphinx, they make few mistakes. And one of the most contentious claims Graham Hancock has supported is the theory that the Great Sphinx of Giza is far older than mainstream Egyptologists believe. The Sphinx is carved from a sequence of layers, each having varied lithological properties. Some researchers suggest that the different weathering rates of these layers account for the unique erosion patterns. The member II layer, from which the body of the Sphinx is primarily carved, is a softer layer and more susceptible to erosion. Beyond the Sphinx itself, the walls of the Sphinx enclosure, essentially the ditch from which the original rock was quarried to form the Sphinx, also show signs of deep weathering and erosion. Hancock's work often focuses on the idea of ancient civilizations possessing advanced astronomical knowledge. He postulates that the Sphinx, with the body of a lion and the head of a human, was constructed to represent the astrological age of Leo. In his view, the Sphinx was a monumental marker of this age, facing the direction of the rising sun during the spring equinox of that epoch. Hancock's broader argument in many of his works, including Fingerprints of the Gods, is that there was an advanced ancient civilization that predated known ancient civilizations like ancient Egypt or the Sumerians. This civilization was lost due to a cataclysmic event around 10,500 BC, which is also the proposed date for the construction of the Sphinx. In Hancock's perspective, remnants of this civilization might have influenced the early stages of other ancient cultures, passing down knowledge and monumental building techniques. Many ancient cultures have oral traditions and legends that speak of a time when gods or ancestors possessed incredible knowledge and abilities. Proponents argue that historians are wrong about Sphinx, and these stories might be remnants of this lost civilization's memory. Supporters of the older age of the Sphinx also point out inconsistencies and gaps in the traditional narrative of its construction. While the Sphinx is traditionally associated with the old kingdom pharaoh Khafre, circa 2570 BC, there's a lack of definitive inscriptions or documents from Khafre's time explicitly claiming his commissioning of the monument. In addition, the old kingdom of ancient Egypt, spanning from approximately 2686 to 2181 BC, is often dubbed Theage of the Pyramids due to the era's colossal architectural achievements. It is one of the most iconic epics in the vast timeline of Egyptian history, marking a period of extraordinary advancement in art, architecture, and governance. The size of ancient Egypt, in terms of territorial extent, has been a topic of debate among historians. However, by the Old Kingdom period, it's clear that the core regions of Egypt, Upper and Lower Egypt, were unified under a single pharaoh. Upper Egypt extended south from the Nile's first cataract near modern-day Aswan to just north of modern-day Cairo. Lower Egypt, on the other hand, encompassed the Nile Delta region, spreading out toward the Mediterranean Sea. The unification of these two regions under the reign of Narmer, or Menes, as he is sometimes known, heralded the beginning of the Pharaonic era and the subsequent consolidation of a centralized state. The Nile River was the lifeblood of this civilization, its annual floods bringing nutrient-rich silt that rendered the surrounding lands fertile and conducive for agriculture. The majority of Egypt's population, therefore, was settled along this river's banks, with vast deserts protecting the civilization from frequent foreign invasions. Determining an exact population figure for ancient Egypt during the Old Kingdom is challenging due to the lack of comprehensive records from the era. Nonetheless, by analyzing archaeological evidence, such as settlement sizes and tomb inscriptions, and comparing it with records from subsequent periods, historians have provided estimations. Most estimates place the population during the Old Kingdom between 1 to 1.5 million people. Also, the Sphinx is believed to have been constructed during the Old Kingdom, specifically during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre C. See the builder of the second largest pyramid at Giza. The choice of materials for the construction of the Sphinx played a pivotal role in its iconic appearance and has significantly influenced its survival throughout millennia. As one delves into the composition of this monumental sculpture, 
it's evident that the ancient Egyptians made meticulous decisions, often based on the balance between accessibility of resources and the intended longevity of the structure. Also, the use of granite is evident in the later restorative attempts made to preserve the monument. Particularly during the New Kingdom, certain parts of the Sphinx, notably its paws, witnessed the addition of this harder and more resilient stone. Granite, known for its durability and strength, was chosen as an ideal material to withstand the test of time. While limestone could be carved with relative ease, granite required much more effort and precision. However, its longevity made it a worthy investment for restoration. The construction likely began with the careful selection of the site on the Giza Plateau, followed by the meticulous planning of the statue's form. The artisans might have started by creating a rough outline of the Sphinx, determining the major features that would be carved. This process would have required an intimate understanding of the geological layers, ensuring that the harder, more resilient limestone was used for the head and face, and the softer, more easily carved limestone for the body. The initial excavation and extraction of the limestone would have been a formidable task. Large blocks of stone needed to be removed from around the outline to reveal the general shape of the Sphinx. Rather than being discarded, these extracted blocks were utilized in other construction projects, including the nearby temples and causeways. This recycling of materials indicates an efficient use of resources and an understanding of the ecological balance. With the general shape of the Sphinx emerging from the plateau, the artisans would have moved on to the more refined carving work. This would involve the detailed sculpting of the creature's features, smoothing its surface, and adding intricate details, such as the facial expressions or the curves of the muscles. But according to Graham Hancock, historians are also wrong with this theory. And as Graham explains, Sphinx was built with a lost and very advanced technology. Furthermore, the Sphinx has remained well-preserved over thousands of years, despite the harsh desert environment. There are a number of factors that have contributed to its longevity. First, the Sphinx is made of limestone, which is a relatively soft rock that is easily carved. However, limestone is also relatively resistant to erosion, especially when it is protected from the elements. The Sphinx is located in a sheltered area with its back to the Giza Plateau and its face facing the Nile River. This has helped to protect it from the wind and sand that would otherwise have eroded it over time. Second, the Sphinx has been restored several times over the centuries. The first known restoration was carried out by Thutmose IVA Pharaoh, who ruled Egypt in the 14th century BC. Thutmose IV cleared away sand that had accumulated around the Sphinx and repaired some of the damage that had been caused by erosion. In the 19th century, the Sphinx underwent a major restoration project led by the French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette. Mariette removed more sand from around the Sphinx and repaired some of the damage that had been caused by centuries of neglect. He also added a protective layer of limestone to the Sphinx's body. In recent years, the Sphinx has undergone several more restoration projects. In the 1980s, the Egyptian government launched a project to clean and conserve the Sphinx. In 2014, the Sphinx underwent a major restoration project led by the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities and the Getty Conservation Institute. This project involved cleaning the Sphinx's surface, repairing cracks and chips, and applying a protective coating. As a result of these restoration projects, the Sphinx is today in relatively good condition. However, it is still important to protect it from the elements and from human damage. The Egyptian government is committed to preserving the Sphinx for future generations, and it is working to develop a long-term conservation plan for this iconic monument. Moreover, the water erosion hypothesis has sparked significant controversy and discussion in recent decades. In the 1990s, John Anthony West, an independent Egyptologist, introduced a revolutionary perspective based on the study of the weathering patterns on the Sphinx. West argued that the deep erosional features on the Sphinx, especially on its enclosure walls, were more consistent with water erosion caused by prolonged rainfall than with wind and sand erosion. To validate this hypothesis, West collaborated with Dr. Robert M. Schoch, a geologist, to conduct a more in-depth examination. 
Shosha's observations indicated that the erosion patterns on the Sphinx were indeed consistent with those caused by water runoff, particularly during a time of increased rainfall. Upon close examination, the body of the Sphinx and the walls of the Sphinx enclosure show deep vertical fissures. These fissures prove Graham Hancock and other explorers are right and historian are wrong. According to advocates of the water erosion theory, are more typical of the patterns of erosion caused by rainwater running down from the top, causing the limestone to erode vertically. These patterns are distinct from those caused by wind and sand, which tend to create horizontal erosions. The Giza Plateau has not experienced significant rainfall for many millennia. However, during the Pleistocene-Holocene transition, approximately between 10,000 to 7,000 B, see the area had a much wetter climate. If these findings are accurate, then the Sphinx's origins would date back to a time when the Giza Plateau experienced much more precipitation, potentially pushing its age back to 5000 BC or earlier, during a period known as the African Humid Period. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.